Hello! So just to continue along the theme of these recent videos we've been doing um, about how feeling emotions and rationality can be extremely helpful, one can say necessary tools that we should utilize together as opposed to uh, seeing them as something that is adversarial with each other, like emotions are different than rationality and you have to pit them against each other, or thinking that strong emotions like anger, sadness, shame should be denied, or that rationality, being rational about a problem should be denied. Uh, when it comes to manifesting, it, it seems like subtly people do these kind of things all the time. They, they deny their emotions being there. They deny using sound, rational thinking. Um, and they often pit how they feel against their rationality. And there's no need to do this. So that's what we've been exploring um, recently. And what I definitely think is like is worth looking at, uh, you know, and, and just considering in, in your own life, in my own life. I mean, it's, uh, it's worthwhile to do this. So I thought we would just continue with the next section of psycho cybernetics chapter uh chapter five i think it is yeah the chapter in psycho cybernetics called how to utilize the power of rational thinking in a book with many great chapters this is perhaps the best chapter in my opinion um i don't know there's there's a lot of great chapters in in psycho cybernetics just like in the power of your subconscious mind it's hard to just choose one but rational thinking is so underutilized that um it really is I would say like a relief to hear Maxwell Maltz write about it in such a appropriate and liberating way and be like, oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with me being rational or with me, you know, looking at these difficult emotions and working through them. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing. So, um, yeah, Maltz writes, the fact that there are quote unquote, buried in the unconscious memories of past failures, unpleasant and painful experiences does not mean that these must be dug out, exposed or examined in order to affect personality changes. As we have pointed out earlier, all skill learning is accomplished by trial and error. By making a trial, missing the mark, consciously remembering the degree of error and making correction on the next trial until finally a hit or successful attempt is accomplished. Maltz talks about this earlier in Psycho Cybernetics. Um, again, if you're curious to hear more about this and haven't read this book, definitely worth um, reading Psycho Cybernetics or listening to the audiobook version. Maltz goes on to say the su successful reaction pattern is then remembered or recalled and imitated on future trials. This is true for a man learning to pitch horseshoes, throw darts, sing, drive a car, play golf, get along socially with other human beings, or any other skill. It is also true of a quote-unquote mechanical rat learning its way through a maze. Thus, all servo mechanisms, by their very nature, contain memories of past errors, failures, painful, and negative experiences. These negative experiences do not inhibit but contribute to the learning process as long as they are used properly as negative feedback data and are seen as deviations from the po positive goal that is desired. I'm going to read that last sentence again because it's, it's very important. These negative experiences do not inhibit but contribute to the learning process as long as they are used properly as negative feedback data and are seen as deviations from the positive goal that is desired. I hope that makes sense when Maltz says that. Um, what Maltz is saying is you, you, we, we fail our way to success. That's how physiologically, psychologically, how we're wired, basically. You might not totally agree with this, but Maltz is making a very interesting point here that I think has a ton of validity. Um, the issue is a lot of times we dwell in our failures instead of seeing our failures as the necessary stepping stones for future success. This is why, you know, classic new thought teachers, I think I made an episode on this, H.M. Uh, Lee Katie, one of my favorite law of attraction teachers, 
she, you know, would say, call failure good. Um, w. Clement Stone, you know, he always talked about how failure is the key to, you know, learning. You just fail and keep on trying and keep your aim and eventually you achieve or manifest what you want. This is really like, you know, fundamental stuff when it comes to these um, manifesting principles. And we don't hear enough about failure and um, negative experiences, negative emotions, working through them. They are positive things if we can look at it in this big picture way and keep focused on what we really want in life. You know, and as I mentioned yesterday, I know one thing that we, we all want, in my opinion, is, is to feel okay on the inside. And we're going to feel okay on the inside and we're okay with uncomfortable uncomfortable emotions when they come up uh, if we recognize that they are part of this bigger process of um, achieving more of what we want in our life. And that feeling good in the middle of, um, you know, kind of like uncomfortable emotions like anger or sadness feeling okay, you know, feeling good might be seem extreme, but feeling okay, even when these strong emotions come up, it's, it's pop, very possible to do. So anyway, Maltz continues. However, as soon as the error has been recognized as such and correction, of course, made, it is equally important that the error be consciously forgotten and the successful attempt remembered and dwelt on. These memories of past failures do no harm as long as our conscious thought and attention are focused on the positive goal to be accomplished. Therefore, it is best to let sleeping dogs lie. Our errors, mistakes, failures, and sometimes even our humiliations were necessary steps in the learning process. However, they were meant to be means to an end and not an end in themselves. When they have served their purpose, they should be forgotten. If we consciously dwell on the error or consciously feel guilty about the error and keep berating ourselves because of it, then unwittingly, the error or failure itself becomes the goal that is consciously held in imagination and memory. The unhappiness, the unhappiest of mortals is that man who insists on reliving the past over and over in imagination continually criticizing himself for past mistakes, continue, continually condemning himself for past sins. Again, not recognizing that these past sins, these past missings of the mark, which is what sin means, right? These past missings of the mark, these past uncomfortable feelings, and sometimes even humiliations were needed for us to reach the goal that we you know, have achieved today and want to achieve in the future. You can succeed through failing again and again. This is um, something that I, I don't know if we really even begin to appreciate to the extent that we, uh, we could, a lot of us who get into these law of attraction ideas. Instead of having this totally idealized version of the process, um, we can be okay with setbacks and seeming failures know that they are going to propel us in the future to feeling better and better and getting more and more of what we want in our life there's no need to look at you know trauma from our past as as this negative thing that's going to hold us down forever you know we can use it as a springboard for having a a better feeling and a better you know a better future in general um yeah, I hope that's clear. I, I feel like this is, again, as I like to say, uncommon common sense in some ways. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like this advice. Um, like Malt said in the last excerpt I read, Many of my patients are plainly disappointed when I prescribe something as simple as using their God-given power of reason as a method of changing negative beliefs and behavior. You know? Failure way to success. Feel as good as you can while you're doing it. Feel okay. You know there's nothing wrong with you. Relax into it. Relax into the abundance that's always here when we're present. It's not that dramatic. It just, it tends to work. And that's why we do it. If you have questions, let me know. RackleyHounselor.com.